second ever Hanukkah week from 4 to 13, where over the next six days we'll be running special features and taking a look back through the year 2013 as it happened in the tropical regions. So far this year we've had 83 tropical storms worldwide, of which 35 reached hurricane status and uh, 16 reached a major hurricane intensity or its local equivalent. Of these, 39 made landfall, the most of which occurring in Mexico, where nine separate storms made landfall in that country, on either side of the, um, of the continent. Um, in terms of individual landfalls, the Philippines had the most of those, with eight separate storms causing a total of 18 landfalls at least um, across the country. The strongest storm worldwide this year was Super Typhoon Haiyan, which reached a sustained winds of a staggering 195 miles per hour, 310 kilometers per hour, and bottomed out with a central pressure of 895 millibars, uh, and possibly even lower than that. But before we begin properly, let us spare a thought for those who lost possessions, property, or even people they held dear um, throughout this year, because as we know, these storms may be beautiful and fascinating, but they can also be devastating and deadly. Now, you may remember last year's Hurricane Week, which went through the top 100 recorded cyclones around the world. For those of you who enjoyed it last year, I'm pretty sure you'll find this year's Hurricane Week even better. Uh, this year, the main feature that I'll be doing is covering each nation and region that is prone to tropical cyclone activity. Now, it was originally intended uh, that all tropical regions in the world will be covered, but due to time constraints, this was scaled back to cover the Northern Hemisphere only at this time. However, those of you viewing from south of the equator, don't worry, you haven't been forgotten. Uh, there will be a feature covering the Southern Hemisphere in this format, which should be airing in March or April 2014. Um, the actual date or dates will be put on the Force 13 website whenever it has been decided. For live storm tracking information around the world updated all year round, um, do make a note of visiting the website force13.com for that and much more. For user convenience, here is the running order of features that you'll see throughout Pelican Week. Because it's such a large project with a lot of content, there may only be a certain section that you're interested in seeing. Hopefully you'll see it on your screen now. Along with the main feature, we will have a selection of five full-season animations from around the world, along with animations of the 2013 Atlantic and East Pacific Hurricane Season animations, um, which will be at the end of the week. Also look out for our featured hypothetical Hurricane Season uh, animation which was submitted by Andrew444 and a 2013 Atlantic What Might Have Been season which takes a look at the worst case scenario on what turned out to be a rather inactive season here in the Atlantic Ocean. Part 1 generally covers the Northern Atlantic and to kick off we'll start here where I'm based in the UK and Ireland. Situated in the far northeastern Atlantic Ocean, the United Kingdom and Ireland form the British Isles and with an average summer sea surface temperature of around 15 to 18 degrees Celsius, around 59 to 64 degrees Fahrenheit, it's an exceedingly rare occasion that a tropical system ever threatens this region. However, a lot of extratropical storms find themselves here, many of which were once Atlantic hurricanes. So because of that, and because I live here, this is where we will begin the main feature of Hurricane Week 2013. So, whilst the UK and Ireland doesn't have the most exciting tropical cyclone record, with a grand total of one recorded, even that one has some doubt cast over it. However, many extratropical storms have passed over the British Isles with hurricane force winds and caused damage and fatalities. Our costly cyclone was Ex Lily in 1996 with $300 million in damages, and deadliest storm was Debbie in 1961, which killed 12 in the Republic of Ireland and 6 in Northern Ireland. The last storm to move over land was Ex Katia in 2011. Hurricane Debbie was the fourth storm of the 1961 hurricane season and began to turn northeast after reaching its peak as a Category 3 storm. The storm passed through the Azores, though no damage was reported here. Debbie continued towards the northeast as a Category 1 hurricane, but was only confirmed to be extratropical once it eclipsed the western coast of Ireland. Regardless of whether it was tropical or not at the time of landfall, the storm still struck with hurricane force winds, resulting in 18 fatalities and around $50 million in damages. Charlie first brushed the coast of North Carolina and Virginia as a Category 1 hurricane before weakening to a tropical storm as it moved out to sea. Charlie turned extra-tropical south of Newfoundland and proceeded towards the west-northwest. The remnants of Charlie brushed the south coast of Ireland, causing heavy rainfall and flooding across the southern and eastern parts of the country. 
The storm caused five fatalities and several million dollars in damages. Ex-Charlie then moved into Wales where rainfall broke records in a number of locations. The storm then exited out of Lincolnshire and out into the North Sea before dissipating near Denmark. The Great Storm of 1987 first formed in the Western Atlantic and headed northeastwards out to sea and towards Europe. The storm deepened as it approached the British Isles and moved over the south of the UK with hurricane force winds. Whilst the Great Storm did have winds of hurricane strength, gusting to category 3 intensity in some places, the storm was not a tropical cyclone, nor was it ever in its lifetime. However, this storm remains to be the most well known in the United Kingdom and with damage of at least £1 billion, pounds, the storm was more costly than all the ex hurricanes that have passed through this country put together. After moving through Cuba and the Bahamas, reaching major hurricane intensity in the process, Lily of 1996 moved out to sea and slowed in its forward motion for a number of days, whilst maintaining hurricane strength. After briefly reaching a secondary peak as a Category 2 storm out in the North Central Atlantic, Lily then weakened to a tropical storm and turned post-tropical north of the Azores. Lily made landfall as a post-tropical storm in Ireland and crossed the Irish Sea, moving over the Isle of Man and then Cumbria. The main damages occurred from high waves, as high as 40 feet at sea and 15 feet along the coast. This and heavy rains contributed to two direct fatalities and $300 million in damages. As a tropical cyclone, Hurricane Katia of 2011 didn't come close to making landfall, though it did peak as a Category 4 hurricane in the open Atlantic. After curving to the northeast, Katia moved across the northern Atlantic, turning extratropical in the process. Ex Katia eventually made landfall in the Outer Hebrides and then the very northern tip of mainland Scotland. The storm caused wind gusts of Category 2 hurricane force and strong winds resulted in fallen trees and damages of £100 million. Located in the southwest corner of Europe, the Iberian Peninsula is one of the areas that are more likely to receive tropical systems in the future, especially if sea surface temperatures rise. Indeed, this area has received two storms in the past, one in 1842 and the other just eight years ago. However, since we're looking at storms since 1950, we'll also take a look at storms that pass through the Azores as well as the mainland in this section. Eleven cyclones have made it as far as the Azores, seven of them being tropical storms, three Category 1 hurricanes and a single Category 2 hurricane. Hurricane Gordon of 2006 is the costliest storm to affect the area with damages of $3.8 million, but Hurricane Emmy in 1976 remains the deadliest, causing 68 fatalities. The last storm to pass close to the Azores was Nadine last year in 2012. Hurricane Emmy was the fifth storm of the 1976 season and changed its direction more than once out in the open Atlantic. Emmy peaked as a Category 2 hurricane whilst approaching the Azores and then dipped southward and hooked back towards the north, striking the Azores as a Category 1 storm. Whilst no damage occurred on the islands, Emmy's fatalities were the result of a plane which crashed whilst trying to land in hurricane conditions. Subtropical storm Vince formed in October 2005 west of Madeira and transitioned into a tropical system as it moved northeastward. Briefly attaining hurricane strength, Vince proceeded towards Spain where it made landfall as a tropical depression, the first storm to do so in modern times. Vince did not cause much damage on the Iberian Peninsula. Hurricane Gordon peaked as a Category 3 storm in the Central Atlantic and attained a secondary peak as a Category 2 hurricane whilst en route to the Azores. Weakening to a Category 1 storm, Gordon passed through the southern Azores and turned extratropical soon after. Gordon didn't cause significant damage in the Azores, but the Iberian Peninsula fared worse from the extratropical version of the storm. 
The storm caused power outages and falling trees, resulting in five injuries. Gordon also went on to affect the British Isles, as you can see there, extra tropical storm Gordon affecting the British Isles at the end of that loop. Hurricane Nadine was the 14th storm of the 2012 hurricane season and reached hurricane status as it curved towards the Azores. Nadine made a close approach on September the 18th as a tropical storm before she curved away towards the south, eventually turning post-tropical. However, Nadine regenerated far to the west of the Canary Islands and proceeded westwards, curving northwards and then dipping south before curving back towards the northwest and reattaining hurricane status. At this point, Nadine reached its peak intensity before beginning to weaken again as it curved back towards the south and then east. Nadine finally turned post-tropical for the final time, just before moving through the Azores. Despite tropical storm warnings that were posted in the Azores, no significant damage occurred on the islands. Now to the Atlantic coast of Canada, particularly Nova Scotia and Newfoundland as these areas receive most of Canada's tropical cyclone impacts. Their position puts them well into the 40s in degrees latitude, meaning that most storms are in the process of extratropical transition or have already done so by the time they arrive. However, 30 tropical cyclones have made landfall in this region, 8 of them as a tropical storm, 19 Category 1 hurricanes and 3 storms of Category 2 intensity. Due to their high latitude in relation to the tropics, major hurricane landfalls here are unheard of. The costliest storm in this region was Hurricane Igor in 2010, causing $200 million in damages. The deadliest storm to impact the region was Hurricane Hazel in 1954, causing 81 fatalities. The last storm to strike the area while still tropical was Igor in 2010, though Leslie in 2012 came very close. In 1959, a tropical depression formed in the Gulf of Mexico and passed through Florida at that intensity, causing some flooding in central and southern parts of the state. The storm developed further as it moved out into the Atlantic, becoming a hurricane shortly before turning extratropical on approach to Nova Scotia, where it made landfall and stalled before eventually moving back out to sea and made a final landfall in Newfoundland. The storm caused the sinking and capsizing of numerous boats, resulting in 35 fatalities in all. Tropical storm Juan formed in the Atlantic to the southeast of Bermuda in September 2003. The storm moved towards the north, soon intensifying into a hurricane as it passed to the east of Bermuda and reached its peak intensity as it approached Nova Scotia as a Category 2 storm and intensity it maintained until landfall near Halifax on September the 29th. The storm caused winds gusting up to major hurricane strength over parts of Nova Scotia, resulting in 8 fatalities and $200 million in damages. After peaking as a strong Category 4 hurricane, Igor of 2010 began to curve towards the northwest, eventually weakening to a Category 1 hurricane, but maintained this intensity for several days as it curved back towards the northeast and eventually made landfall in eastern Newfoundland just before turning extratropical. Igor was a large storm when it made landfall and caused heavy rain over most of the island, which resulted in flooding, severe enough in some areas to wash out roads, bridges and structures. The storm caused a single fatality in Canada and $200 million in damages in total.
now to the lonesome island of Bermuda, situated far to the east of the United States and well to the northeast of the Bahamas, in the open Atlantic. Many strong hurricanes recurve out to sea, though sometimes that's not great news for the British Overseas Territory. Whilst direct hits are somewhat rare, Bermuda usually experiences inclement conditions due to a tropical cyclone at least once a year. In terms of actual landfalls, there have only been three due to Bermuda's small size, one tropical storm, one Category 1 hurricane and a single Category 2 storm since 1950. The costliest storm to impact Bermuda was Hurricane Fabian in 2003, causing damages of $300 million, which was also the deadliest cyclone too for Bermuda, with four fatalities. The last storm to affect Bermuda was Tropical Storm Gabrielle this year. After passing through the Lesser Antilles as a tropical storm, Emily attained hurricane intensity and quickly intensified further before making landfall in the Dominican Republic as a Category 3 storm, resulting in two fatalities. Emily then passed by the Turks and Caicos Islands and the southeastern Bahamas where strong tropical storm conditions were recorded. Emily eventually reattained hurricane intensity and passed directly over Bermuda as a Category 1 storm with sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. Whilst no fatalities resulted, Emily still caused $50 million in damages across the island with severe damage to some buildings and a number of vehicles destroyed. Tropical Storm Dean formed in early August 1989 in the Central Atlantic and developed into a hurricane just east of the Leeward Islands. After stalling to the north of the Lesser Antilles, the storm passed close to Bermuda as it strengthened into a Category 2 hurricane. Dean then made landfall in Newfoundland as a tropical storm before turning post-tropical. Hurricane Dean caused moderate damage in Bermuda with damages of $9 million. Hurricane Fabian formed in the Central Atlantic and gradually intensified to become a powerful Category 4 storm as it made its approach to the Leeward Islands. After passing to the north, Fabian turned towards the northwest, fluctuating in intensity on its approach to Bermuda. The eye wall of the hurricane passed over Bermuda whilst Fabian was still a strong Category 3 storm with winds of 120 miles per hour, resulting in four fatalities, a further nine injuries and $300 million in damages. And now to the most northeasterly stretch of the United States, that's the Maine, New Hampshire and Massachusetts part of New England. This area enjoys a bit more shelter from tropical cyclones and other places along the coast due to peak sea surface temperatures no warmer than those seen in the Baltic Sea in some places. This means that most storms weaken or turn post-tropical before reaching this region. Nonetheless, this area has seen eight tropical cyclones make landfall since 1950, five tropical storms, a single Category 1 hurricane, and two Category 2 storms. No major hurricanes have impacted the area in this time frame. The costliest storm for this region was Bob in 1991, who caused $1.1 billion in damages. Bob is also believed to be the deadliest storm, causing five fatalities here. The last storm to make landfall was Tropical Storm Hermine in 2004. Hurricane Esther formed in the tropical eastern Atlantic and became a major hurricane halfway between Africa and North America. The storm continued to intensify and maintained Category 4 intensity for a number of days as it passed Bermuda and approached the United States east coast. The storm finally weakened up to the east of Delaware and Esther slowed down and turned eastward just off the coast of Massachusetts. Quickly weakening to a tropical storm, Esther then looped out to sea, coming back to skirt the east coast of Massachusetts before making landfall in Maine as a tropical storm.
Damage in this area was minimal, with most of the $6 million in damages being seen on Long Island. Hurricane Esther also downed a U.S. Navy aircraft over open waters, resulting in seven fatalities. Esther is also notable for being amongst the first hurricanes in which the United States Navy seeded the storm with canisters of silver iodide in an effort to weaken the cyclone. This project was ultimately abandoned several years later. Hurricane Bob formed near the Bahamas and intensified into a hurricane as it moved north of the islands. The storm quickly reached Category 3 intensity whilst east of the Outer Banks of North Carolina and continued towards a landfall in Massachusetts as a Category 2 storm, resulting in over a billion dollars of damage in that state alone and nearly half a billion in its surrounding states. Bob caused a total of 15 fatalities along its path. Tropical Storm Noel began life in the Caribbean where it first struck Hispaniola, causing well over a hundred fatalities there. Noel then moved over Cuba before moving out over the Bahamas, causing significant beach erosion to parts of southern Florida. Noel attained hurricane intensity as it left for open waters, and a day later became extratropical as it continued northeastwards. As an extratropical cyclone, Noel passed not too far from Cape Cod before making landfall in Nova Scotia. The western side of the storm caused wind gusts well into hurricane force in Massachusetts, whilst heavy snow fell in the northern reaches of Maine and in Canada. More recently, both Hurricanes Irene and Sandy have caused problems to this region. Irene made at least three landfalls in the United States before arriving in New England, and then the storm turned post-tropical well inland. Strong winds and flooding resulted in this region, the worst in over 70 years in some places. At least $200 million in damages were routed across New England, not including Rhode Island or Connecticut, where widespread flooding and power outages also occurred in that region. Hurricane Sandy made landfall further south and moved inland, however the storm still caused over $23 million in damages across this region and caused a single fatality. Wind damage was the primary factor here with widespread power outages and fallen trees due to wind gusts near or at hurricane strength. Continuing southward now, here we have the states of Rhode Island, Connecticut and New York, and historically speaking this area is significantly more susceptible to receiving tropical cyclones than the previous region that we looked at. While sea surface temperatures are not typically ideal for tropical cyclones here, hurricanes do have more of a chance to make landfall before dissipating or turning post-tropical. So, 21 cyclones have made landfall in one of these three states, 15 of them being tropical storms, two Category 1 hurricanes and four Category 2 storms since 1950. The costliest cyclone here was Hurricane Sandy last year, which caused $32.4 billion in damages. Sandy also now holds the record for deadliest storm in this region, causing 57 fatalities here. Sandy was the most recent storm to impact this region. Tropical Storm Diane formed in the Central Atlantic in August 1955 and continued towards the northwest, reaching hurricane intensity as it curved towards the north. Maintaining a slow north-northeasterly motion, Diane continued to intensify until it reached its peak intensity as a Category 3 hurricane. The storm then turned back towards the west and increased its forward motion again. Gradual weakening began from here, though the storm still reached the coast of North Carolina as a Category 1 hurricane. Moving inland, Diane maintained tropical storm intensity as it curved northwards, then northeastwards, over Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania and New Jersey, before exiting through Long Island. Diane finally turned extratropical on August 20th.
Diane caused historic amounts of flooding over New England, with major flooding also occurring further south. In all, the storm caused nearly 200 fatalities and $755 million in damages, though the indirect costs of the storm probably bumped up the figure to higher than a billion dollars. In August 1976, Tropical Storm Bell formed to the east of the Bahamas and stalled for a while before moving towards the northwest where it gained hurricane intensity. The storm then turned northwards and intensified further to its peak as a powerful Category 3 storm. Bell then began to weaken as it passed North Carolina and continued to parallel the coast until its Category 1 landfall on Long Island. Bell then continued into New England where it dissipated. The storm caused 10 fatalities, 5 direct, and $100 million in damages. Nine years later, in September 1985, Tropical Storm Gloria formed near the Cape Verde Islands and coasted through the Central Atlantic as a tropical storm. Reaching hurricane intensity on approach to the Leeward Islands, the storm turned towards the northwest and began to intensify further north of Puerto Rico. Gloria peaked as a Category 4 storm in between the Bahamas and Bermuda and then began to weaken on approach to the United States, falling back to Category 1 strength. The storm then began to intensify once more where it skimmed the outer banks of North Carolina as a Category 2 hurricane and then made landfalls in Long Island and Connecticut as a Category 1 storm. The storm brought wind gusts of Category 3 strength to Long Island and high rainfall accumulations for inland areas of the Mid-Atlantic states. In all, Gloria caused 14 fatalities and $900 million in damages. More recently, Hurricane Irene also affected these areas, making landfall in Coney Island as a strong tropical storm in 2011. The main effects from the storm in these areas were its rainfall, which caused significant flooding and washed out a number of roads. Strong winds resulted in a number of fallen trees and power outages across this region too. The next year, Hurricane Sandy made its final landfall in New Jersey, which caused problems in New York City and the wider area, as well as power outages for hundreds of thousands in New England. On Long Island, thousands of homes and buildings were destroyed. A number of subway tunnels in New York City were flooded completely, and across the state, two million were left without power in the aftermath of the storm. Continuing on our journey down the east coast of the United States and we arrive at the mid-Atlantic states of New Jersey, Maryland and Delaware, the latter two occupying the Delmarva Peninsula. This area is generally less likely to receive tropical cyclone landfalls due to being partly shielded by North Carolina and Virginia to its south. However, not only does this region see storms pass through that have already made landfall, but a fair number of storms that did make landfall over the years. Since 1950, these states have seen 13 tropical cyclone landfalls, 12 of them as a tropical storm, and a solitary one making landfall as a Category 1 hurricane. The costliest storm in this region was Hurricane Sandy in 2012, causing $30 billion in damages. The deadliest storm was Hurricane Agnes in 1972, who caused 71 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall here was Hurricane Sandy last year. Tropical Storm Doria formed in late August 1971 north of the Bahamas after travelling through the Lesser Antilles as a tropical depression. Doria continued to curve towards the north and made landfall in North Carolina before moving on to a second landfall on the Delmarva Peninsula and then moved on to New Jersey and passed through New York City before turning extra tropical over New England. Doria caused beach erosion and winds gusting up to borderline hurricane intensity in North Carolina and Virginia. More severe conditions were experienced further north, mainly due to rainfall, with as much as 10 inches falling in parts of New Jersey. Flooding was the main factor in this region and a primary cause of the $138 million in damages. 
In September 1999, Hurricane Floyd struck the area after making its first landfall in North Carolina. Rainfall totals exceeded 12 inches in parts of New Jersey, Delaware and Maryland, causing significant flooding, record-breaking in some areas. Damages amounted to tens of millions, perhaps approaching the $100 million figure in these states, including Pennsylvania. Hurricane Isabel made landfall in North Carolina as a Category 2 hurricane in September 2003 and whilst the storm passed over a very small part of western Maryland, the size of Isabel caused far-reaching effects extending into the Delmarva Peninsula, Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Significant storm surge and flooding resulted, particularly on the eastern coast of Chesapeake Bay. Washington DC was more affected by strong winds rather than flooding and tropical storm conditions occurred as far away as New Jersey after landfall. Damages from Isabel amounted to over $1.1 billion in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland and Washington DC combined. More recently, in 2011, Hurricane Irene skimmed the coast of Delaware as a Category 1 hurricane and then made landfall in New Jersey as a strong tropical storm. The passage of Irene resulted in numerous fallen trees in Maryland and Delaware, where a tornado was also spawned by the hurricane. In northern parts of New Jersey, Irene caused significant flooding after some areas received over 10 inches of rainfall. Damages amounted to over a billion dollars in New Jersey, mainly due to the widespread flooding that occurred, a state record that would be surpassed only a year later. Last October, Hurricane Sandy formed in the Caribbean and struck Jamaica as a Category 1 hurricane, before intensifying further and making landfall in Cuba as a major Category 3 storm. Sandy then began to weaken over the Bahamas and began its extratropical transition, a process that would only be completed just before the landfall. Sandy lost its hurricane status just north of the Bahamas, before regaining it as it began accelerating towards the northeast. The storm then curved northwards, attained a secondary peak as a Category 2 hurricane, before pushing northwestwards. Sandy turned extratropical just before making landfall in New Jersey with sustained winds of 80 miles per hour, a Category 1 hurricane equivalent. In New Jersey, where Sandy made landfall, rainfall totals exceeded 10 inches in some areas and winds gusts to 90 miles per hour. Thousands of buildings were destroyed, with tens of thousands more significantly damaged, and millions across the state and beyond were left without power for a time. Damages in New Jersey amounted to around $30 billion, with hundreds of millions of dollars in damages occurring in the surrounding states of Pennsylvania, Maryland, Washington DC and Delaware.